to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. They have it in their mind to displace, to completely crush and displace the middle class they're trying to get everybody that does not make a certain amount of money out the city and so with this being the case i honestly feel like the wealth of the wicked is being stored up for the righteous and a lot of people that are being pushed out into the country into the suburbs you know into these um underdeveloped places you might feel like, oh, you know, where are we going to go to live? Because a lot of people are economic refugees right now. They're moving from city to city to see place to place to place trying to find affordable housing. But I really actually believe it's a move of God that's pushing all of the wicked people in together into one place and then actually dispersing the righteous and giving them that opportunity and that chance to escape judgment. And so I really feel like that's the curse. Everybody that's stuck in Charlotte right now, that's not leaving when it, when it come time to leave, those are the people that are going to end up suffering the most, the poor people that's stuck in the cities. Because think about what I'm saying. You remember, do you remember when Katrina hit Louisiana? It was the poor people that could not evacuate the cities, the large major cities that had the hardest time. People that's out in the country, they built for it, baby. They got a boat in the bag. They got some food stored up, you know, worst case scenario. It's the people in the cities that are dependent on those systems and dependent on public transit and dependent on all of these things. Those are the people that suffer the most when catastrophe hit. So I really feel like Everybody that's there now need to leave, you know. Welcome back, Wi-Fi, to yet another underground transmission of the Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. So, you know, all throughout my last seasons, I usually have an Oracle episode and this season will be no different. I'm going to be talking today from the book of Devian about um, just our dependence, our over dependence on technology, our over dependence on our government. I foresee a lot of things happening in the very near future. And as much as we need to be building networks and communities, I feel God has been very faithful to us in giving us those tools to be able to do that. You know, these social media spaces can be weaponized to build communities of people who have solidarity around some very negative, evil, wicked, despicable things. But it can also be used to bring communities of people together behind good, upstanding righteous causes that preserve um, communities. And I feel that it's really an important tool. People kept asking me that because, you know, I'm anti-government, anti-establishment, anti, 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 and then pro-black. But they say things like, why would you get on um, social media if you're against social media? Because this is still a tool that can be used for us to begin to uh, develop a new way of thinking about the communities that we would not have been able to reach before. So I was speaking to one of my family members and I guess I'll just like catch that piece of conversation in because that's easier than reinventing the wheel behind what I said. 
but I was letting her know that, you know, I didn't see the providence at the time of me moving out of the city into the country. Mm, Cause I moved to Greenville, but I'm not in Greenville, baby. I'm in Easley. Mm, mm, yeah. I'm out in the middle of nowhere because my priorities when it came to buying a home was having my own land, having some property. I've got a shed in the back that I'm going to pull down and put a greenhouse on. Um, and so just having that sustainability was more important to me than being in the city, jugging it up with my friends. I actually got invited to be somewhere tonight in the city of Charlotte. City of Charlotte, hey, that I'm not going to end up being. Um, because my priority systems have really changed, you know, for us, family and friends have been the people we grew up with people we love. Yeah. We're going to have to change that to people who are aligned with our purpose and our goals for the next season. You know, that's who your family is. That's who your friends are. Jesus said that in the Bible, when they came in, they say, Hey, Jesus, your mom and your brothers, they outside looking for you. And he said, my mother's here. My brothers are here. Um, because those were the people that were listening to him, that were subscribing to his philosophies about what needed to be happening in the nation at that time. You know, his his mom and his brothers had come because people was like, hey, Jesus done lost it. They came to get him and take him back home and, and probably lock him in a room and put him in a straitjacket. And so he was making that distinction right then in the gospel of saying no. My mother is here. You know, my brothers are here. This is my people. This is my community. And we have to begin as people of God to stand on that. And when I say people of God, I think some Christians got that twisted. The people of God are the people who are about kingdom business, understanding that the kingdom is going to encompass more than people that would just traditionally be considered Christians. because. What is that really? What is that? Jesus was not a Christian, okay? Yeah, Jesus did not live according to the teachings of <laughs> the Apostle Paul. Don't get me wrong. All scripture is great for edification, but not all of it is going to perform in you the work that needs to be done of perfecting. So you have to be really, really careful about how you divide the word, not just what it says. But what is it producing in your life? If you're reading the Bible every day and calling yourself a Christian, but you're full of malice, you're fearful of other people, you really need to maybe read some other texts. Yeah, it's not the kingdom only. It's the kingdom first. So if you've read through the Bible and it didn't get you where you need to be, maybe you should try some Buddhist principles. Maybe you should try some meditation. And I know what the religiosity says in you. It says, no, that couldn't possibly be it. But if you believe what you say you believe, then the gates of hell will honestly not prevail against that. I'm proof of that. I've studied lots of other different philosophies. Um, the words that God has given to different cultures at different times to produce different results in those nations, you know, other nations who have been unified by Islam, who have been unified by Hinduism. What was the unifying factor? More often than not, it's something that was already in your Bible, but you just didn't look at it that way. So, yeah, I've done all that study and still identify as a Christian. So it can happen. And I'm telling you, there is a gathering happening. There's light collecting and there's darkness, gross darkness, collecting power and strength and glory and honor and riches. And if we as a body don't become just as intentional about positioning ourselves for the wealth transfer, positioning ourselves to be self-sufficient so that when the systems that provide for us collapse, we still have a bomb in Gilead. You have to remember that as the economic system in Egypt was collapsing and God was collapsing that system for the purpose of Exodus, for the purpose of being able to bring his people out. 
you know, inflation was what was happening in the Bible at the time that his people were crying out for his help. They were saying to them, you've got to make the same amount of bricks that you make every day, but we're not going to supply the straw. And see, we call that persecution. Baby, that's inflation. That's exactly what it was. You use that same paycheck now and buy the same groceries that you need for your family, but you do it while the price of those things is higher than what you can afford. It, that's exactly what was happening. And so we are being prepared to be brought out of a system that is beginning to fail us. But there's no way that God can bring us out of the system if we are dependent on it. And so I brought up different examples of times where the same systems that we trust in were not there to actually save us out of the adversity that they caused. And so it's time for us now to begin to pull our money out of big banks, to pull our stakes out of the city, out of jobs. Every black person, okay, every person of color needs to have an LLC at this time. You need to start figuring out how you can merchandise the skills that you're already using to build someone else's empire to be underneath the capitalist system to now be able to recreate these same type of economic systems because the large corporations are in decline. You know, and this is what the Great Reset is all about. Where will the next power source come from? Because listen, we're the power source. We are the ones that feed capitalism. We're the ones giving dollars to Amazon. We're the ones that are making content and putting it on these social media engines. So you already are running a business. This is a business. So now get your LLC. Now start the business accounts and begin to leverage debt instead of your resources because nothing is an asset anymore right now unless you really just got money 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 to have some real estate holdings that word holdings speaks to something that you can actually hold long enough for the value of it to increase most people if they buy a house they're flipping it because you can't let a house sit for five or ten years to actually mature to the point of having enough value for you to sell it at a premium as opposed to a discount. Most of us start selling off things that are costing us money because they were liabilities. Most of us would lose money if we let a piece of property sit for five years. So now we have to become economically savvy. We're called to be meek as a dove, yes, but cunning as a serpent. So if you see what I see. <laughs> but if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek, then it, you have to start to really begin to deconstruct these large systems of beliefs that we hold to be self-evident. These beliefs that we hold around how we do money, community, and life. And that is what the wireless woman is here to do so until the next underground transmission i need you to stay unplugged unbothered so we can be unmute until the next episode class is dismissed